Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Let's take a look at something outside of my typical EDC knife slash tactical folding content. And let's talk about something that most everyone can and will use often, a chef's knife. Now, even if you don't spend a tremendous amount of time in your kitchen, when you do, you're going to want a knife that's going to live as long as possible hold an edge as long as possible, and perform the tasks that you ask of it. Nothing is more dangerous than a dull knife. Number one, you're applying more pressure with a dull knife, and that's more opportunities for you to slip and cut the hell out of yourself. The other thing is you can actually damage some of the food ingredients that you're cutting up and chopping up and slicing up and putting into your food. You can bruise tomatoes, you can do all kinds of stuff to even change the flavor profile of the food that you're cutting. So you want something with a good long-lasting edge, you want something with high corrosion resistance, and you want something that you're not breaking the bank for. Because let's face it, we as knife collectors are easily able to justify a high-end folder a high-end fixed blade, but a lot of times we can't justify the expense of a really good kitchen knife, even though we're much more likely to use that over a long period of time than almost anything else that we own. So you're really going to be in two categories. One is going to be the super high-end, handmade, full custom knives. I have a couple myself. I've had them for years. I absolutely love them. But you're going to probably worry a little bit as you are using them because you don't want to do any kind of damage that's going to require it to be fixed or replaced or anything else. And you also worry about somebody else coming along behind you and cleaning that knife and not properly maintaining it, allowing it to rust or corrode, especially if it's a high carbon steel. Now, the flip side of that is what most people do. They go to a big box store, they go to a cutlery store, and they buy a cheap butcher block or they just buy a cheap individual chef knife, uh, maybe utility knife, maybe petty knife. And they spend as little as possible because they know that the knife is not going to last them long. The edge isn't going to last very long. It's going to hold up for crap and they're going to end up replacing it. So what happens is they'll buy that $75 or $100 knife two, three, four, five, maybe 10 times throughout their adult lifetime. Now, while that's not generally going to equal the amount of money spent in a high-end custom, it would certainly allow for somebody to buy into this. This is the Serene Kitchen Co. Chef Knife in Magna Cut. Oh yeah, Magna Cut. That's something I don't recall seeing any kitchen cutlery ever being made in. This is something born of the EDC community, of the tactical community. An amazing super steel that gives you both high hardness and high toughness. So that means you're going to be able to chop things. You're going to be able to slice and cut things with a very, very long lifetime on that edge. And it's got very, very high corrosion resistance. So even if you're not immediately drying the knife after you've cleaned it, you probably don't have too much to worry about. Now, you should be doing that anytime you clean your knife 
You should always be thoroughly drying it. Don't air dry it. Don't let it sit out with water spots on it. Always, always, always thoroughly dry any, well, any knife, but any kitchen cutlery for sure. Another thing that I really like about this is the scales. This is made of Ultrex SureTouch G10. Now, we're used to G10 being a very hard, very smooth, very slick scale material. This has a rubberized feeling to it, rubberized texture. So now you've got the resilience of G10, so you don't have to worry about any, uh, any acidic juices or anything else uh, breaking down that material. You don't have to worry about getting blood on it or any kind of gravies or, or anything that it might encounter as you throw it down on your counter in your kitchen while you're preparing your meals. You've got a very resilient material and it's antimicrobial, believe it or not. And that was the main reason that they chose this material for this knife. Now, the other big deal about this is it's very, very grippy. It's very easy to hold on to. And the way they've shaped the scale fronts with this taper allow you to do lots of little chopping, big chopping. You can do your low cuts, you could do your high cuts, slicing, and you've got the proper grip on the knife because it allows your hand to drop right down into the blade and you've got the proper grip on the knife. Now, I'm one of those weirdos that even though I know that this is the way I'm supposed to be gripping a chef knife, a lot of times I'll start off with my finger on the back of the spine. Even though I know it actually doesn't give me any more control than, it, than having a pinch grip, for some reason my finger just tends to naturally land there. And they have crowned the spine nicely so that there's no sharp edges or hot spots, no matter how I choose to grip the knife. Another thing that I really like is right down here, right where my fingers are going to wrap around, around that choil, this is also nicely rounded with no harsh edges anywhere for me to come in contact with. So here you've got a knife that is seven and three quarter inches in the blade length. Typically, your chef knives are broken up into 6-inch, 8-inch, 10-inch, and there's even 12-inch. So this is a little bit of an odd size, quarter inch short of the uh, medium size. But from what I've experienced, it's got really good balance, really good speed to the cutting, and it hasn't said no to anything that I've thrown at it. Now, I haven't done a hell of a lot with it. I've only had it in the house about a couple of weeks now. I've, I've chopped up some fruit. I've chopped up some veggies and sliced a few things. Did phenomenal. Had zero complaints. And from what I can tell, between the time it was new and to the time I was done uh, cutting up various things, I was still greeted with a nice sharp edge that was able to slice tomatoes very cleanly without bruising it, without pushing into the skin and denting it. It was fantastic. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I think it's pretty damn great. The other thing I love about this is the fact that one of my favorite knife makers, Ed Kim, the owner of Red Horse Knife Works, is the man behind this project. So when you're spending $445 on a knife, you want to know that the person standing behind it is someone that's well-respected, that has experience, that knows what the hell they're doing, and he certainly is all of that. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't show anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. So you could spend a lot more in a custom, you could spend a lot less in a you know, kind of a mass-produced garbage knife that's going to get replaced a million times, or 
you could fall right in the middle at 445 and get a semi-custom hand-finished knife with all of its components from the U.S. and made in the U.S. Now, I'm not one of those that goes overboard and goes crazy about everything's got to be made in America. But it really is good if what you're looking to purchase is available in the price range you're comfortable in as an American-made product. Supporting American businesses is fantastic. And Ed is a hell of a guy. He's got a great reputation in the industry as a knife maker. And he's got great designs. He's got great ideas. And I really think that he's going to have a hell of a success here. Just the fact that he was smart enough to take a super steal from the, the tactical or EDC community and bring it over into kitchen cutlery. Like I said, I don't recall anybody having done that before. I think that was one of the best possible ideas because now you've got a knife that you don't have to be afraid of using that you don't have to be afraid of maintenance, keeping clean, and not worrying about it really rusting or anything else. It's got a nice finish on here as well. Now, unfortunately, my mind is blanking. Uh, I know that there is a name for the grooves, the decorative, decorative grooves that you see here in the blade. Um, they do serve a purpose, and if I can think of the name of it, I'll pop it up here on the screen somewhere. But as you're slicing through things, it'll create a little bit of an air pocket in here and it'll allow things to stick less frequently to the blade. You're still going to get things that stick. I mean, especially your, your wetter things, your wetter vegetables and your wetter uh, fruits, they're gonna, still going to stick a little bit. But um, it does help push things off of the blade as you're cutting through. So if you're wondering what that was all about, it's not just to look cool and aggressive. There is actually a reason for it. Plus, it's reducing some of the weight in the, uh, in the blade to give you the balance that you're going to want. Because you got to realize, that's a big honking blade sitting out there. Even though it's thin blade stock, it's still a lot that's very far forward of the handle. So anything that can help with the balance is great. So as I mentioned, I've had a chance to uh, chop, slice, cut a few things. Uh, I was playing with some pineapple, carrots, cucumber. Um, gosh, I can't remember everything else that I was playing with. And finished everything off with the tomato. Everything sliced nicely. I had no issues. I am not a chef. I am not a kitchen professional. So I'm not here to, to tell you how to properly cut things. And my technique is probably not all that fantastic. I'm sure that somebody in my audience here has gone to culinary school and you're watching me do this and you're like, oh no, what is he doing? Cut it this way before you cut it that way and do this and do that. I'm cutting things in the simplest, easiest way that I know how. But the great thing is I'm not having to force this knife when I'm doing it. It's doing everything effortlessly, which makes it safer and which makes it much, much better than some of the crap that I've had in my kitchen over my lifetime. Now, as I showed a little bit earlier, um, I'm very, very happy with the full custom kitchen knives that I have. They're fantastic. They're amazing. But they're cost prohibitive for most people to spend. Uh, that petty knife is $750 in San Mai. And uh, that large trench-style cleaver as crazy as that thing is, it's super useful, especially if you're doing stuff like, you know, chopping down pineapples and watermelons and stuff. Having that crazy weight in, in, on there is really, really great. But again, you're talking nearly $1,000 for a handmade custom that most people will never, ever be able to justify. This, I think, fits more within people's budgets. I'm not saying it's cheap. Four forty-five is still a lot of money to spend on a, on a kitchen knife. However, Go out there and search. See what high-end production chef knives are going for. This, at least you know, there was human hands involved. Ed and the, uh, the crew in his shop are doing all the finishing. He's putting all of the edges on. And everything is QC'd by him individually to make sure everyone is as perfect as it possibly can be. Now, the way they're running things here is it's a, uh, a pre-sale. So you order the knife, 
and then 90 days later, it's ready for you. And one cool thing is I'm breaking one of my normal rules, something that I don't ever do, something I don't ever request. Uh, I do have a coupon code here for you. So if you are shopping at, uh, it's, uh, oh my goodness, I just forgot the website name, uh, serenekitchenco.com. And you put in Scale 50, you'll see $50 off the price of the knife. Hey, that's great, man. Saving 50 bucks, that's awesome. That'll buy you a really, really nice butcher block. Think about that. When we talk about MagnaCut, when we talk about the SureTouch Ultrix G10, when we talk about the balance of the knife, when we talk about the ergonomics of the knife, the overall design being partially German influenced, partially Japanese influenced, we're talking about all these ideas being put together in one knife. And I'm sure they're going to be making other knives in the future. I would love to see a, a kitchen utility and a fillet knife from these guys, especially in MagnaCut. I think there's a lot of room, a lot of area for them to expand. But you're putting all this into one knife and creating as perfect of a chef as you can. Now, when I'm talking about the melding of the, uh, the, the, the influences of the knife, when you look at a lot of Japanese-style chef knives, they're going to have a very long, straight edge to them. And when you get into European and German knives, you're going to have a lot of belly. It's going to turn up toward the tip, and you're going to have a lot of belly to work with. This has both. You've got uh, quite a long, straight edge, and then you've got a lot a lot of belly to do your low cuts with. So, great design, great materials, great craftsmanship. I think it's at a solid price point all the way around. I think it's a winner. Ed, I'm so happy for you. I think this is going to be a great success. I love the knife. I think it's fantastic. And the presentation was nice as well. Uh, one note that I would make for Ed on the presentation, it looks great, and it's going to be fantastic for the kitchen, but for shipping... Uh, even though it's fitted in very, very tightly against that closed cell foam, when I opened it, you know, it had definitely knocked around a little bit inside during shipping. Um, and sometimes when it's closed in there long enough, when you go to open it, the, uh, the G10 will kind of stick to the lid a little bit and lift the knife up with it. Not that that's really a complaint, but it's something that, you know, maybe Ed should be made aware of before he goes shipping hundreds and hundreds of these things out in the next year. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the knife. That's my thoughts on the packaging and a little bit of playing around in the kitchen. Hope you guys enjoyed some of that. And uh, that's it for me for now, guys. I'll catch you on the next video.